Okay, good morning everybody. We are so glad you're here today. It is another beautiful day here in the heartland. Hey, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time in your word together. I thank you, God, that you are leading us and guiding us and that there is a path for us that you have created, God. We thank you, Lord, that each of us is going to take the next step, know what's next, and take that next step that you have planned for us. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Yeah, that is the, the fact here. We are going through uh, What's Next, a sermon series. This is our last week, week number four of our What's Next sermon series. And I believe God has a journey for you. And I believe each of us is on that journey. Every single one of us is on a journey. And, and you, you might not even know it yet, but you are going somewhere and God is trying to take you somewhere. And so for each of us, we have got to know what our next steps are. And that's what we've been talking about over the last several weeks. Now, these four messages are from a book by Chris Hodges, and the book's called What's Next? And these series, the sermon series, is, is off of those four uh, parts. They're not chapters, but they're four parts of that book. And so we, we built that in, in, in line with this book, and so hopefully you've been reading along with us. Um, there's tons of things in this book uh, that we are not talking about. Um, so if you have the book, you'll, you'll realize it's like a companion to that, to the book. So we have a theme verse for this series. Now let's go over this theme verse we've gone over each week. Tw- Proverbs twenty nine eighteen. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. If people can't see what God's doing. Okay, if we can't tell what God is up to, then we begin to stumble our, over ourselves. We begin to, uh, you know, not take the steps we need to take. We don't, we're stumbling into our life. We might be stumbling in our marriage. We might be stumbling in our finances. We might be stumbling in our relationships. We might be stumbling in our connection with the Lord. All of that stumbling is because we don't know what God is truly up to. So if we don't have clarity about our spiritual journey, we're going to be stumbling through our lives. And there's a whole lot of people nowadays that they are stumbling through their lives. And God's saying, hey, I've got something bigger and better for you. That's what he's saying today. I've got something bigger and better for you. And friends, when we get to understand God's plan and we get to understand what God is up to, then we still have issues in our life, but there's something bigger that we're connecting with. We're deciding, you know what? There's still some issues, but I've got some bigger plan than just stumbling piece after piece, time after time. So here are the four steps of this process that we've gone through in this series. The first one is know God. See, it's know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, make a difference. The first week we talked about knowing God. You cannot go any further down this path if you don't know God. Friends, if you don't know God today, well, well, I don't know, uh, that's the first thing we got to do. That's the most important thing, honestly. You got to know the Lord. And we talked about in that series that the word for know in the New Testament that Jesus used for knowing God was gnosko, and it means to know intimately. And we talked about how the, the people of the time will say, oh, but Lord, we, we prophesied in your name and we did these miracles. And he says to them, I never knew, I never gnosko you. I didn't know you intimately. So it's not just about going to church and hearing a sermon and, you know, and taking communion. Those are fine, but you know what? It's about that intimate relationship that God wants to build with us. And then after that, our second week was on find freedom and finding freedom. Because once you know God, God wants to begin to unshackle you from all the things that are holding you back. And I tell you, this is an important step, friends, because as those shackles begin to break off your life, you begin to realize that you've got some freedom that's coming. Those habits, those hang-ups, those addictions start to be broken. Because you can't go to the third step if you still got a bunch of things that you need to find freedom from. So if we're not finding freedom... You know, we can't go on to the next step, which is discovering your purpose. Then we begin, once we get some freedom, then God begins to show us why we're here. And this was uh, last week's discover your purpose. And so God begins to show us why we're here and he begins to unlock those things. But listen, you can't really get to this purpose level unless you know God and find some freedom. Friends, if we don't find the freedom that we need, you can't do what God's called you to do. I could not be a pastor if I'm filled with addictions and problems and sins and habits and things that are not from God. If I'm just 
I got 50 addictions, I am not going to be able to have the purpose in my life of being a pastor fulfilled, right? Right. Which brings us to this week, make a difference. Once we know God, once we've got some freedom in our lives and we've now got some purpose, now it's time to take all of those and build, blend them together to make a difference, a lasting difference, an eternal difference in the lives of everyone around us and in our own life as well. That's what we're talking about this week is making a difference. Now, I don't know if you've seen, but I've never been, but maybe you've seen uh, dog races, right? They got those beautiful greyhound dogs and they, uh, they have a, a track there. Lots of times it's in Florida and different places. And on that track, they've got a little mechanical rabbit. I think it used to be a real rabbit. Nowadays, it's a mechanical. They call it a lure. And they have this lure. And, and so the, the, the mechanical rabbit takes off and then the, the gates of the of the dog kennels open up and the dogs start running and they chase that rabbit around the track and the dog that's there at the finish line the fastest is the winner that's how it works right that's how those dog races work and uh there was years ago but there was in uh in florida there was a a time where the the mechanical rabbit takes off starts off and the the gates open wide op- open up and the dogs start running and not long after that the lure that mechanical rabbit went down the track it spittered and sputted and and wires came out and the whole thing just blew up right there and those dogs were so trained to follow that rabbit they didn't know what to do now so some of them just sat there right on the track others of them kept running some of them ran into the wall and hurt themselves and 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 uh some of them just started barking at the people in the crowd they didn't know what to do and i think that is a great illustration of what our lives are like if we don't have the right purpose in our lives. Friends, that rabbit is God's will. That is God's plan. That is God's path for our lives. And, and you know, we are supposed to be running after that plan, that path. But if that thing, if we're not on the path, well, goodness gracious, we're just, you know, barking at the people in the crowd and laying down on the track and goodness knows what we're doing, but we don't have that purpose in our lives. God's called us to live in that purpose. And I believe the happiest people are purpose-driven people. They're my people. The people that wake up every day and say, I want to make a difference in the world, those are my people. That's the kind of people I love being around. You can feel the energy from them. You can feel the calling in their lives and the the destiny that's sitting within them. Oh, man, I, I hope we're all growing in that area. And I hope we're all chasing the rabbit that when God says, come on, let's go, we all bolt up out of those, uh, those kennels and we start chasing what God's got for us all the way to the finish line. All right, our next slide here. See, to make a difference, we've just got to stop making it about us, friends. In 1 Corinthians 3.13, it says that on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show a person's work if a person's work has any value. On Judgment Day, that fire is going to prove whether we have uh, done the things of God or not done the things of God. That that same verse, uh, that same passage of Scripture talks about um, the beautiful things of God are gold and silver and jewels, and the things of ourself are wood, hay, and stubble. And on Judgment Day, everything that's built about us or built on us or built for us And that we've done for ourselves, all of those things are going to be burned up. And that same fire comes upon everything in our life. And it reveals what God wanted us to do that we did and that we did for ourselves and that we're not motivated by the right things. So if we're going to talk about making a difference today, we have got to talk about ceasing making it about ourselves, about us. It's no, it can no longer be about us anymore, friends. Because I'll tell you right now, all the things that we make about us do not have eternal value. They don't, they don't truly make a difference. But the things we do that God's called us to do, we're not chasing that rabbit, the things we do that are in line with the thing that God wants us to do, oh man, friends, those things have eternal value. Those things continue on and live on through all eternity. That's how we truly make a difference. Now I'll tell you, there's a gravitational pull, always a gravitational pull to make it about us. Every time to make everything about, about us. 
We know how we feel about things. We know how we act and react. And so there's always this natural gravitational pull to be selfish and to make it about ourselves. And I'll tell you, this same thing is, is in churches as well. There is a gravitational pull for all churches to be about the people that are in those churches instead of about reaching other people. It's, it, it's, 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 it's natural for this to happen. It happens, I'll tell you this, it happens automatically if we don't strategically and purposely decide that our church is going to make a difference. Our church is going to reach this wonderful small town that we live in. We are going to reach our family. We are going to reach our friends. We are going to invite them to church. If we don't specifically build church services and ministries and, and all of it about reaching other people, I guarantee it will constantly have the gravitational pull to be about us. And there's a trend going on in American churches right now. And that trend is for lots of churches to be about what people within those churches like. You know, they're having three-hour services and they're doing things that people don't understand. And I'm telling you, that, that's not good because the lost people in our town will not understand a three-hour service. They will not understand some, some church things that some people are doing. And we've got to do this in a way that when you invite a friend, you can explain to them, hey, it's a little over an hour long. It's, I promise you it won't be too bad. And, and here's what's going on. And we can explain that whole thing so that when we can invite our friends and, and, and be empowered to, to change our communities. I'll tell you right now, friends, we are on a mission. This church, we are on a mission. We are not here to just entertain ourselves and, and do things that we like to do. We are here to reach those people that God's called us to reach, to make a difference, amen, to make a difference and have eternal impact into people's lives. And we cannot lose sight of why we do what we do. Because if we lose sight of why we do what we do, that gravitational pull will always bring us back to that place of making it about us. So we are deciding, and we're, we're going to be intentional about making this church about reaching the people that are around us. Now in Matthew chapter 25, that's where we're going to go to today. God gives us some real, Jesus speaks about the last days and about judgment, and he gives us a really good glimpse of what it means to... Um, to be intentional and make a difference. So we're going to be in Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. Okay, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered in His presence, and He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at His right hand, and the goats, the goats on his left. Then the king, this is Jesus, verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. And verse 35, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me. You invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? Verse 39, when did we ever see you sick or in prison or visit you and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus' words to us. I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of, these, of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. All right, friends. That's a powerful verse. Some powerful verses right there. Now check this next part out, our next slide. If Jesus notices, that should be enough for us. And in verse 40, I tell you the truth. When you did it for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me if jesus notices it should be enough for us making a difference may not look like some big thing i tell you what the world thinks makes a difference and what jesus thinks makes a difference are two totally different things guys the world says you got to make a bunch of money and be really important and be really famous and then you can make a big difference and god says jesus says you know what 
you can be doing some really small things. But if I'm the one leading you to do them, they have a very big impact. Jesus Jesus noticed when they went to that prison. Jesus noticed when they fed that person. Jesus noticed when they served. And if Jesus noticed it, friends, if Jesus is saying, that ministered to me, that was great. You were chasing the rabbit right there. You were right along the path I had for you. If Jesus noticed it, friends, that needs to be enough for you and me. Whether the world does or does not notice, that's that's up to them. But if Jesus noticed, that's got to be enough for us, friends. That's got to be enough for us. See, what the world thinks is important is really just not that important. But Jesus says those small things, when you do them intentionally, when you do them on purpose, when you do them in line with my will, those small things make a big difference in people's lives. And we need to realize that many times the things with eternal value do not look like they have much value. To to the normal eye they look insignificant to normal people but jesus says no those things those are not insignificant at all and you realize that many of the things that other people say are insignificant when we do them as jesus asked us to do them they have eternal impact they have they have an impact into eternity think about that not just an impact into this world i mean we're all going to die someday be buried in the ground and and, i mean it's sad but that's going to happen to every single one of us and at some point in time everyone we ever know will also be uh be gone and and at that point what what do we really have left Well, if we do the right things and make a difference and really love people like Jesus is saying to love them and doing what is significant to Jesus but may seem insignificant to other people, we are going to have an impact into generations long, long after us, friends. Our next point here, to make a difference, we must be intentional. See, if we don't live an intentional life, we will never make a difference. Intentional, what an important word. Now, we can begin right now on living an intentional life. And God is calling us to live in a way that is intentional, on purpose. See, living in a way that's on purpose. Now, uh, uh, once we start living out our life intentionally, we got to follow through on that, friends. So we start deciding, I'm going to live intentionally. I'm going to do these things on purpose. And then we've got to follow through on them. Notice what the scripture says in Matthew 25. It doesn't just say you wanted to give some water away and you wanted to help that person. You wanted to invite them in. You wanted to give them some clothes. I know you didn't do it, but you wanted to. No, he says you did these actions. You had intention and you had purpose and you did these actions. And as you followed through with those actions, lives were changed forever. You did it as unto me. You were intentional. Those intentions were followed up by good actions. So there is no one ever, by the way, who there's no one in the history of all mankind who's ever been unintentional and yet a success. It's not like someone showed up unintention, to an unintentional place at an unintentional time to an unintentional group of people and just unintentionally had success. That's never happened. Instead, They've had intention. They've had purpose. They get that, the, the rabbit from God and they know which direction they're going and they chase that rabbit. And I'm telling you what, they intentionally go the direction God wants them to go and that per, per person has true success, friends. All good things, all things worth having in life are uphill. All things that you really, the, the things that really matter in life, they're all uphill, friends. And all the things that, you know, that are just downhill and coasting, they're just going to happen. But I'm telling you what, if we want to live a life that other people are not living, we're going to have to do it on purpose. And we're going to have to live that life intentionally making a difference. Our next point here, there is a hidden power in consistency. Now, the definition of consistency is conformity and the application of something. So God is calling us to apply his word to our lives over and over again, consistently taking the word of God, the plan for our lives, and applying it daily to our lives. I think consistency is the most underrated word in the English language. You know, if you wanted to give somebody a, uh, a compliment, you say, oh, you're clever, you're smart, you're funny, you're pretty, you're attractive. 
you know, you're wise. You would never say, oh, you, you're, you're consistent. Oh, gee, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. No, why? Because we don't really value consistency in today's culture. But I'll tell you, never underestimate the power of doing the right thing over a long period of time. Making a difference, a true eternal difference, is doing little right things over a long period of time. Intentional, consistent things from God over a long period of time begin to change lives. I'll tell you, consistency compounds. It's like compound interest. And as you begin to do the right things over and over and over again, I tell you, it begins to compound and those things begin to take your life and, and, and throw it in the right direction and compel it into the right direction. But geez, friends, we got to rethink the way we think about consistency. We got to value it a lot higher than we value it in today's culture. See, things start small. Start small. Be intentional with making a difference and see what God can do with you. when you do those things, the, the cup of water in the name of the Lord, the feeding and the inviting and the serving. You do those to Jesus over a long period of time, and I'm telling you, friends, you will make a very big difference in a whole lot of lives. All right, so our next slide here. H have you read this book, The Greatest Story Ever Told? Now, John Maxwell, the author of this book, uh, tells a story, and he was given this book by his personal assistant. I think it was his second church that he was in, his young man, and uh, he had this opportunity in front of him, and his personal secretary says, I got a book for you. It's called The Greatest Story Ever Told, and he was like, this is awesome, man. I can't wait to dive into this book, and he opened it up, and it's completely blank. It's completely blank, and he's like, well, what's the deal here, and she said, you write your own story, John, you fill this book up with dreams and visions. You fill this book up with the life that you're about to lead and a difference you're about to make in lives. And so the very first sentence John Maxwell puts in, this, uh, in his book is, I want to make a difference. Now, John Maxwell, and many of the ideas I'm sharing with you today uh, came from his, his concepts. And John Maxwell went on to write over 100 books on leadership and relationships and church life. He's written some amazing books, and I've read many of them. And all of that because he decided to write the story of his life instead of having someone else write it. And I think there's way too many of us, friends, who someone else is writing the story of our lives. We are not writing it. We're reading the story instead of writing the story. May each of us be the author of our own lives. That we are chasing the rabbit that God's got. And we are going to finish that race that God's placed before us. But we've got to stop reading. We've got to stop letting someone else write the story of our lives. Maybe you've gone through a hard time. Maybe you've gone through a difficult situation. Maybe there's some hurts and betrayals that have happened to you. But listen, friends. Your story's not over yet. You can flip this thing around and your story can be one of, yeah, man, I started off pretty rough by what they all did to me, but I ended up being exactly where God wanted to meet be. I chased that rabbit and I did consistently and intentionally the things God wanted me to do and I wound up in the place that I, God wanted me to be. Because to make a difference, friends, we're all gonna have to write the story of our lives instead of just read it. We're gonna have to be preparing for the future God's got for us, not always just repairing the things that we stumble over every single time in our lives. Because when we see what God is doing, we no longer stumble, right? That's our key verse. So when we see and we're intentional about writing the story of our lives, we get up above the problems. We still got problems and stuff, but we get up above them because we've got a mission to accomplish. We've got a difference to make in the lives of the people next to us. Now, when I was growing up, I had several people that they might not know it, but they really helped me grow in Christ. I remember Danny Ringan, my youth leader. Boy, he would just, he was such a great uh, influence on me and would help me. And I would talk to him about different things. And he, and he might not know what level of influence he is, but what an influence he, he, he had in my life. I remember Doug Galbraith, a Christian friend of mine, when I was growing up. And, and it's not like we had prayer meetings every day, but I knew, and there was a couple different critical times in my life where I needed someone to talk to, and Doug talked to me, and we talked about it, and it was in Christ, and I'm telling you what, he helped take me the direction I need to be. 
Now, this week even, I've had a pretty crazy week. Lots of pain, personal pain, other situations that are painful, and I'm watching people go through a lot of pain. And you know, I had two different people call me up, even though I've been the one trying to help people through that pain, they called me up and they said, how are you doing, Heath? How are you doing? Are you, you okay? And you know what? I didn't really need it until I realized when they called, wow, what a beautiful thing that was. And I, I was like, yeah, let's pray together. Let's have a word of prayer. And it was just a beautiful thing. And I'm telling you, friends, those little, little things like that make a big difference. And look back over your own life. How God used some little person, some, some little situation. And maybe they didn't realize it, but it was that cup of cold water in the name of the Lord. It was that visit. It was that invite. It was that clothing that was needed. And we did that in Jesus' name. And, and, and they made a difference in your life, and you made a difference in their life. Our application slide today, see things the way God sees them and be intentional about making a difference see things the way god sees them see when don't see those things as little and big and you see things as the way god sees them which means that there is no such thing as little and big there is just serve and chase the rabbit now we see things the way god sees them is first once we do that though now we're going to be intentional about making a difference once we see things the way god wants us to see them now it's time to be intentional on purpose all right god i'm going to write the story of my life i'm going to chase that rabbit I'm not going to just sit on the side and bark and howl and run into something else. I'm going to be intentional and on purpose, friends. And I tell you, if we can see things right, that some of those things that look insignificant to the world are not insignificant, if we can see them right and intentionally do those things, boy, now we are truly making a difference in, in other people's lives and we're truly having an eternal impact way beyond what God's asked us to do. Amen? If I could have every head bowed and every eye closed at this time. Please, every head bowed and every eye closed at this time.